Welcome back to this special edition of Eyewitness News from Johannesburg, South Africa. There's another team of Buckeyes down here using technical know-how and textbook knowledge to help black South Africans move into a world they've been shut out from for centuries. In South Africa, black farmers are behind on almost everything, from technology to chicken feed. They farm in remote areas where the ground is fertile, but the roads are bad. The Ohio State University has rolled up its sleeves here to bring 20th century farming know-how to a country fighting to feed its people. A lot of our, our small-scale farmers were not given the chance really uh, to learn the skills of, for instance, poultry farming, pig farming, and so forth. Under apartheid, blacks were banished to the countryside, to regions like KwaZulu-Natal, tribal land, land they could live on but never own, land with little electricity, irrigation, or government help. We tried to select those uh, uh, people in rural areas who wanted to do farming mm. and uh, move them from subsistence type of farming to commercial uh, farming. Edwin Njidi got his Ph.D. in poultry science at the Ohio State University and returned to South Africa to help his people. The thing that strikes me, and of course I've, I've said this a couple of times, is that this is really a global institution. You think about uh, these students who are trained on our campus, but uh, if, we could, if we could figure in some value-added way what they're doing in their communities, here are our graduates in the middle of KwaZulu-Natal, um, absolutely uh, having an enormously positive impact. Bobby Mosier is bursting with pride over this accomplishment, but the dean of OSU's College of Agriculture says a lot of work remains to be done. Some of the real critical issues, uh, getting the chicks here, so that's going to be a critical issue to make sure they've got a supply of chicks coming in, and then the marketing of those birds once they reach the market weight, and, and uh, that, they market them right at the farm gate. But there's one big difference between farming here and farming in Ohio. In South Africa, success can kill you. The man who operated this poultry farm was murdered right here two months ago. And now his widow is trying to continue the family business. The husband of Thobil Indelun quit his job in the city to devote full time to poultry farming. The robbers who shot him to death were never found. But with the help of hired hands, his widow, with seven children to raise, has decided to keep her husband's dream alive. On behalf of our university, we want to give you a gift to show you how much we've enjoyed visiting with you. Thank you. Oh, she was also helping crop farmers learn how to cash in. Farmers cooperate together. They grow the, grow the beans together. They harvest them and bring them in. And they're being dried now. And then they will, uh, they will shell them and get this, this bean and then they will, uh, they will market them. These farmers are also learning marketing techniques like bagging the potatoes they grow to add value and profit. This agricultural project is still in its infancy. A lot of times the farmers will get involved, but because it takes time and they don't have the money, they get discouraged. They'll take jobs in the city and they won't continue farming. But there's a dedicated growing few who are in it for the long haul. It's helped us learn a great deal. These farmers need money, though, for machinery, fertilizer, storage buildings. But banks won't give them loans without collateral. A lot of the land that we've been going over today is not individually owned, as we would understand it. It's owned on a collective basis, tribal organization. And one of the reasons there's conflict here is that within the tribal system, there's pretty profound disagreements about who gets the land, how they can use the land. Another need as great as food in South Africa is more and better higher education. OSU President Gordon Gee and his team of professors signed a helping hand agreement with South Africa's University of Natal. Ohio State will provide technical assistance, exchange programs for faculty and students to provide higher education in South Africa. There is a great need in adult education here. The hope is that Ohio's commitment here will persuade even more countries to get involved in passing the torch. These educators have seen a lot on their tour of South Africa, and they all know this is not some quick fix. It's going to take a lot of time and hard work to bring about true equal opportunity for all the residents of South Africa. Jerry, you can really feel it, though. The yeah. cultural transfusion is well underway. The Ohio State University leaves behind a better understanding of their game and the education process they use. In turn, they bring home with them a piece of South African culture. That's going to do it for now. 
I'm Jay Crawford. And I'm Jerry Revish. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Eyewitness News from Johannesburg, South Africa.